guys. So today we're going to be talking about this holster right here. This is the Blackhawk. I don't know if it's pronounced Epoch or Epic or however it's pronounced, but I'll put the spelling up on the screen here. You can decide for yourself. Um, I've used this holster for, oh, probably close to two years now. And I've, I enjoy it quite a bit. Obviously I spray paint it. It doesn't come in this color. It comes in black and they make various models for different guns, different light combinations. So most gun companies or name brand gun companies, they make a model for. Um, I actually like this quite a bit. I'm not the biggest fan of Serpas. Not that they're not quality in how they're made, but the way that they're designed, I'm not a big fan of. Um, because you have to put your finger basically near the trigger guard and apply pressure in order to release it. Now, if you practice a lot, like you practice all the time with that, then it's not really an issue because it's muscle memory at that point. Um, but, and especially with the Glock models, with other models, your finger is closer to the trigger versus with the Glock model, your finger is more up where it should be. So it's not really an issue, but under stress, it'd be really easy to press in on that, to release it. And then your finger just, because you're applying a lot of pressure and again, you're under stress, your finger going to tie that trigger guard, squeeze off around. Plenty of videos on that happening online. Usually it happens to people who don't train with their stuff often enough. So can you get around it? Sure. Absolutely. Um, but why buy a holster that has a bad design uh, kind of from the get-go? And a lot of places actually ban it from use uh, at their training facilities, which is interesting. And I think that says something about the holster itself. Um, that said, again, I don't have an issue with the quality of Blackhawk gear. Obviously, I like this one. I have other Blackhawk stuff that I like quite a bit. But the Serpa is not necessarily something I would suggest. I think it's better than like a Kydex holster or something like that, which I'll talk to a little bit here because you want some sort of retention. You need a level two or a level three holster for a duty rig, something similar to this, or war belt, whatever you want to call it. So one of the reasons why I suggest getting a level two or a level three holster over say something like a Kydex holster is if you're in crowds, and again, this is from experience as either a security guard or law enforcement, military, whatever. If you're around people, just in close quarters and not everybody somebody that you know is dangerous you want to have some sort of retention on your gun it's really easy again you can go watch videos on YouTube of people that are open carrying just going through Walmart or whatever and someone grabs their gun off them because they just have a regular Kydex holster Kydex is fine for range use it's fine for concealed carry because again you can't see it so you can't grab it but if you're gonna use some sort of whether it's on duty whether it's for your war belt whatever if you're gonna use some sort of open carry type holster you need to have retention 100% um, whether it's just like a little snap or whatever you need some sort of retention so like the, with the Serpas or with the Safari Lands they either have hoods or they have push tabs or whatever but you need something on here that locks the gun in place so someone can't just grab your gun from behind and take it out of your holster because it, it is very easy to do I will say even with um, now with this one it's nearly impossible uh, to actually draw this gun from anywhere except uh, where it is on your body so it's it's easy for me to draw it but even going up from behind someone who's using this holster it's really hard to get a good purchase and be able to draw that gun even knowing how the holster works um, the serpas are easier if the person has proper trigger discipline and again you might you know this may not concern you because you may think oh if someone's driving to grab my gun they're probably not familiar with guns but maybe they are you don't know that if someone's familiar with your holster even if they are familiar with this it's nearly impossible to grab this thing out of there and again, you might say, oh, well, I'll know someone's grabbing my gun. No, you won't. I could easily go up behind you, take your gun without you noticing. You'll notice once it's getting drawn because you'll hear it or feel it, but you won't have time to react and stop it. So that's why you want retention. The second reason why you want retention is if you happen to take a tumble down a hill, you trip, fall, whatever, your gun's going to fall out. Don't believe me? Uh, go watch the movie or read the book, Lone Survivor. Um, they all t took tumbles down the cliff, lost a whole bunch of stuff. The rifles went all over the place or, uh, magazines went all over the place. And I'll have another video on, uh, different pouches you can use for magazines and what I suggest, what I use, what I've used and the kind of pros and cons of those. But same concept for this is you want something that holds this in here other than just friction because friction is not going to be enough. If someone's again, someone's trying to grab it, or if you take a tumble down a cliff, down a hill whatever and you might say oh well, i'm not gonna trip okay we'll go hiking through the woods not a hiking trail but actually through the woods you're gonna trip on stuff it just happens you're not gonna see a root you're gonna get tangled up and you could make the argument okay well maybe i'll get a uh, 
like a lanyard or something where you can attach to the back. And I mean, that's, that's an option, sure. But that's not going to keep someone from grabbing your gun. So again, I highly suggest you get at least a level two holster. And uh, I like the level three holsters because yeah, they're just a smidgen slower. But if you practice with it, they're basically the same speed. But you get a lot of uh, added protection from it. Also, one other flaw again with Serpa, not to you know beat a dead horse, I guess, but the uh, little paddle that you release with your trigger finger. Um, it's easy for stuff to get in there and jam that up to where you can't get your gun out. Again, Google it or YouTube it. You'll find um, plenty of videos of that happening. And also, if you're applying pressure on that before you start, or if you pull on the gun and then you apply pressure on there, it'll lock up your gun and won't release it. So you actually have to press it, then pull on your gun first. If you pull on your gun and then try to pull it, it's really hard to get that. Sometimes you can't even get it out. So... Again, that's just some inherent flaws with the design, but it is an older design for the time. It was good, but now there's better stuff that comes out, and I like this one specifically better, and it's roughly the same price as the level three Serpas. You can get level two Serpas that just have the finger tab, pretty cheap, and again, it's not terrible, but you if you get that, you need to practice a lot, like a lot, in order to develop that good muscle memory. So anyways, all that aside, We'll be talking about this holster here specifically. Obviously, this one's made for a Glock 17 or a Glock 22. They're both the same size. And this one's made for the TLR1 or the TLR1HL. Or also the Surefire X300 will also fit in this. I've been using this for about two years now. And I've obviously done some modification. It does not come with a leg strap. It does not come with this uh, low ride, I guess, mount right here. And I'll talk a little bit about this mount. This mount is actually made by Blackhawk as well. And it's designed for a duty belt for in conjunction like with a jacket, like a winter jacket or rain jacket. Because most of those rain jackets actually have a little slot on the side that zips up. And then you tuck it around your gun and then you clip it down at the bottom. So basically your gun just sticks out of your jacket at the bottom. So that's the purpose of this. But it also works really well just as kind of like a low ride mount for a pistol as well. Like Safari Land makes them. Uh, they make mid-ride, you know, high-ride. The one that came with this one was actually just a standard belt, so it would be probably more up to about here, you know, but it clipped on there just like a normal uh, Kydex holster, you know, anything like that. It'd be level with the belt itself. I'm not a big fan of those, um, mainly because it's kind of awkward drawing from them because your arm ends up, your hand ends up in your armpit before you can actually get the gun out of the holster, and I don't like that. But the advantage is it is easier to draw from uh, when you're in a vehicle because the seat belt doesn't cover it up like it would with this one um, you could go with a drop leg holster if you're doing nothing but vehicle stuff and you would be able to draw a lot easier but with my experience with drop uh, drop legs is they flop all over the place anytime you have to run around it ends up shifting positions and it's just really annoying and uh, obnoxious so I tend not to like the drop leg holsters again I've had one for a while and they work fine but just know that if you've got a heavy gun, you know, it's full, fully loaded, you got a flashlight on there, it's going to flop around. And I definitely don't advise if you get a drop leg holster to put spare mags uh, attached to that holster as well. Put them somewhere else on your body because that just creates so much weight. That's just going to get in your way. Um, but one other reason why I would suggest getting a lower ride mount or holster like this is if it's higher up, you're going to have issues with uh, clearance with your body armor. So if you're wearing body armor, you know that if you have stuff on the body armor, on the cummerbund, around the front, um, it's going to kind of get in the way of your draw. So you should have, if you're right-handed, you should have the right side of your cummerbund uh, completely clear so you can access your pistol and not have any interference whatsoever. You don't want to be trying to draw and then go around, you know, the all of the stuff that's on your, on your cummerbund. You want to just be able to draw straight out, punch out on target. Uh, so... That's one reason. Also, body armor, if you have side plates, stuff like that, you know, you want to get it lower to where you can easily draw and not interfere with anything. So that's important. So all of that said, uh, this holster here, I, it's been modified by me, obviously. you had I had to buy, I actually had this low ride from another holster that came with it, so I actually just used that. But they all mount using the same three screws, which you can see. Hopefully, only, yep, you can see right here, there's one, two, three, and they screw into most... At least the Serpas and this one use the same mounting system, so the screws are in the exact same place. You can cant it either direction. You can lower it and raise it just a little bit, depending on what you do with it. And then it just screws and clamps on to your belt. Um, it's very solid. It doesn't slide around like some of the Safari Land ones. You actually have to use keepers on either side to hold it in place. This one I actually like better because it clamps on and it doesn't move whatsoever. So 
it doesn't matter if your belt's leather for duty or if it's one of these type belts, the nylon works just fine on either. Um, so the modification I did on this one is I put a leg strap on here. So I didn't initially have a leg strap on here and I'll show you why. So without the leg strap, because this is so low ride, I'll flip it over here so you can see it a little bit better. So right here, whenever you draw, so I'll show you how the release mechanism, this is a level three holster. So it has the hood, then it has an internal locking mechanism as well. And obviously gravity is the third, um, I guess thing you had to defeat whenever you're drawing it. Um, so as you shove down and here's the release right here, it's not a swiping motion. It's a push down motion. So as you push down, you draw the pistol out. So how this thing locks up is inside of here. Let's see if you can see it. I'll just use the light on here so you can see. Oh, that doesn't help. All right. So that light's too bright. So in here, right where my finger is, maybe you can see it. I'll push down on this tub tab. See that little right there at the edge of my finger. There's a little locking mechanism that gets pushed out of the way that locks on your ejection port on your pistol. So that's one lockup point. So if I shove the, the pistol down in there, it's not coming out because that has retention on it. Obviously it's locked into the ejection port. So you have to push down on here and it releases. So this one button releases both things. So whenever you shove down, if you push down and you start drawing, it releases both. You can draw it just fine. Now, if someone's trying to grab your gun, this is one of the reasons why I like this too. If someone's trying to grab your gun and they manage to bump this just a little bit, but then you know, you've, you're fighting over, you can hear that click again. Uh, let me try it again so you can see it a little bit better. So as you push down on it, if they were able to push down but they didn't push down all the way, it still takes, it still locks up. So it takes, uh, probably about, if you push about halfway, it releases the hood. And then if you push down the rest of the way, it releases the other one. But the nice thing is if somehow they manage to get the hood popped, but then you know, you're fighting over it or whatever, they still have to press all the way down again in order to get the gun. So it has two layers of safety on it, which I appreciate, which again is why it's a level three holster. Um, I've drawn from this thing a lot of times and it seems very sturdy, very solid. There's no wear and tear on the inside whatsoever. I haven't seen anything that's wearing out or ripping or plastic that's you know warping or anything like that so it works really well for that but the reason i have a leg strap on here is whenever you try drawing on here if you have a, a low ride holster like this if you have one that's up high on just a normal belt mount you won't have as much of an issue with this as long as your belt is very rigid if your belt will flex at all like if you can let's say this is around your body if you can pull your holster out like this while it's attached to you, you're going to need a leg strap because whenever you try drawing from this thing, it naturally, especially, and it's exaggerated by the low ride, whenever you try to draw, it's going to naturally try to come out like this. So even whenever you push on there, it's going to try to come and tilt, which is going to make it really hard to draw the pistol. So most of the time, whenever I was trying to uh, draw from this thing, it would flop out and it would just get really hard to draw out. So that's a negative of this holster. Uh, Safari Land doesn't have that issue as far as I know. Now granted, with any holster with a, a long, like, a low ride option mount, it's going to have this issue. Uh, just because it's physics. So whenever, you know, obviously you're getting leverage whenever you're pulling out, the holster is trying to hold onto the gun, so it's going to naturally come out like this. And whenever it's facing your body, obviously you can't get it out. So if you have, one, you want to try out whatever holster you have with that, but if, especially if you have a drop leg of any kind, or if you have a, uh, a low ride mount like this, you're going to want to get a leg strap. So the way I got this to fit, this is just, this is made by Fire Force. It's off Amazon. You can see the tag right there. Yep. Fire Force. Um, it's fine. It's about the same price as a T-Rex arms, uh, st leg strap or the idle gear makes one too that I have also. And I'll show you that in another video that I use for my gas mask. Um, the quality seems fine. They have Velcro here, which, I don't understand why they have Velcro on the inside of this. I don't know, maybe so you can attach it to something else, but I don't use it for the use of Velcro at all, but it does make it a little bit thicker. So for what I use it for, it actually helped. So if you see on here, you'll notice if you can see right there, there's little washers acting as a spacer because with this, with this, obviously the strap in between here, it sticks, makes it stick out farther. So these two screws are the short screws that come with your standard holster. And some of the holsters come with longer screws as well. If not, you can order them from Blackhawk or you can go to Lowe's and get some screws. It'll work for this. But I had to use the longer screw um, of the three that came with this because there's also there's a little spacer. 
It's like a little triangular spacer. I'll insert a picture here so you can see what it looks like. They will space the holster farther away from your body just a little bit. And that's why it comes with longer screws, at least most of the holsters do. So I use two shorter screws here because obviously there's nothing spacing in between. And then I use a longer screw right here with some washers to where I could actually tighten it down. And all I did with this strap is I just got a small screwdriver, a really skinny one, heated it up with a lighter, and then just punched through this and it just melted and sealed around the edge. So that's all I did to make a hole in it. You can see right here, I didn't get it exactly where I wanted the first time, so I punched another hole. But it's still perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the material, as long as it's hot like that, will seal itself back. So that's all I did to connect that. And then obviously, you know, size it to your leg, you'd snap it around. Now, once it has, once it has um, the leg strap on there, it doesn't move at all. So you can draw in and out of it. Again, it doesn't move. You just draw in and out really easy. There's not a whole lot of friction on the inside. There's just enough to get it to go out if you don't have a leg strap. So you're going to want a leg strap. Uh, whenever you're reholstering, it goes in just fine. But whenever you're pushing the, the lid down, you can see, or the not the lid, but the uh, hood. Whenever you're putting the hood down, you have to press down on this button a little bit in order to get it to go over. So that's not a big deal because whenever I close this, I always use my whole hand anyway, so naturally my thumb just rides right there, so it just goes up over. Not a big deal. Um, Quality-wise, again, this thing's fine. It is really bulky, so that's a negative, but you're going to have that problem with any light bearing holster. If you notice, you can see right here, like a normal holster would probably end, it would, all this would pretty much be gone. You wouldn't have this whole section right here. So whenever you're sitting in a vehicle, just know that it's going to be more uncomfortable because it takes up more space. The price of this thing is right now, what I saw like on Amazon just a few minutes ago is like $106. Whenever I bought it, it was about 80 bucks. And I imagine it's just more expensive right now because everything's more expensive right now. Anything tactical, gun related is more expensive because obviously in case, unless you haven't uh, paid attention to the news at all, you know that the United States is going through some political stuff right now. So it is what it is. Still for $100 though, it's still a good holster and most quality holsters that are level, level three are gonna cost you at least $75 anyways. So I think this is a pretty good option for it. And as always, I always forget something. So one thing I forgot to mention is it does have a tensioning screw right here. You screw this in and it will clamp this down a little bit more, giving you a little bit more, not necessarily retention, but less wobble. So the gun will wobble around in there a little bit unless you tighten that up. Also, there is a, you can see on the back side, there's a screw right there and that's to insert a little insert. So depending on what kind of light you're using, again, it'll make less wobble whenever you put your gun in there. One of them has a little kind of groove, almost like a uh, like a crescent shape cut out of it because one some lights are bigger than the others that this model's designed for, and then it has another one that's more flush fitting. So again, it's a tighter fit depending on the model. So it'll come with all that stuff though in the box. So that's just something I thought I would mention in case you had any questions as to what all these screws and everything were for. So anyways, hope you all have a good one.